public-private partnerships conference in Mayfair, which is one of the wealthiest parts of London. Here in the UK, where the PPP's model was born, it's already proven to be a huge failure. The private finance initiative, which was used to build hospitals and schools, has already ended up costing twice as much as if the government had actually borrowed and paid for those hospitals and schools directly. And now, the UK government and British investors are exporting this debt iceberg overseas. This conference is all about promoting PPPs to African governments and it threatens to impose huge costs on governments, to undermine democratic control over public services and to hike the prices of these services so that um, the poorest people might not actually be able to access them at all. In Lesotho, one of Africa's first um, PPP hospitals is already costing three times more than the old public hospital that it's replaced. And meanwhile, the private company um, that's involved is, is making a 25% profit already. Basically, the experience to date is that PPPs are a rip-off. They um, hand over huge profits to private companies, and meanwhile, all the risk remains with the public, the government, and the taxpayers. Uh, in terms of practical um, implementation of PPPs, it has a lot of problems. In particular, in Ghana, we have seen a few pro uh, projects that we think that uh, they are all labeled PPPs, but uh, eventually what is happening is, is suddenly the government with uh, uh, debt, uh, which eventually uh, is going to be debt that the public will be paying. Uh, we have a few projects in terms of the energy sector where uh, a lot of uh, IPPs, uh, independent power producers, uh, producers have come into Ghana producing power and uh, in terms of the tariff rates which are coming up, uh, it means that uh, we're going to pay a bit more for power, we're going to pay a bit more for certain public services, uh, in terms of even water and at the end of the day government is going to foot the bill and most of the time PPPs are also not too um, uh, open or not too transparent for the public to know what is involved so most of the time um, a lot of shady deals go on. People vs PFI was formed about a year ago and it aims to bring together people fighting against and concerned about all the various 700 odd PFIs across the UK. These are in areas of health, social care, local authority, waste disposal, also in areas like courts and prisons um, and all of these are just basically bleeding the public purse. The total destruction of public services um, does not only take people out of employment but also affects the level of uh, development. It affects education, it affects health and when education is affected it means it affects the direction of the country and what it does is that it's a total recolonization of our parts of the world by uh, unelected uh, financial um, authorities, uh, unelected financial aggregations and uh, it is important that we fight together of the solidarity movement not in the north to redirect our affairs for our people to be in control of their lives so that we can get the benefit of the natural resources and other things that we have uh, which are bound in Africa. We at Jubilee Debt Campaign believe that everyone has a right to good quality public services, to health care, education, water, electricity and transport and we believe that the way to pay for that is through progressive taxation by taxing the wealthy and by cracking down on tax dodging by wealthy people and by multinational companies, not by mortgaging off public services at a huge cost. Don't export it on the sly.